The game Super Mario Land holds a very special place in my heart. It was the first time I ever saw my favorite portly plumber on a handheld, and I spent countless hours grabbing coins, going down pipes, and stomping Goombas. So, since I want to relive that magic feeling and warm embrace of nostalgia, I'm going to be talking about Super Mario Land for the Nintendo Game Boy. Back in 1989, a big gray brick would be released upon the world and would become known as the Nintendo Game Boy. Alongside the release of the Game Boy was games like Tetris and Super Mario Land. With Mario already being the Nintendo mascot, it was only natural for them to release a Mario game with their new system. But it's time to talk about the plot of the game. While there isn't an intro to the game, we can all guess what happens. Or we could just read the instruction manual, but I will summarize. Princess Toadstool is kidnapped and needs to be rescued. But wait, it's not Princess Toadstool, it's Daisy. Anyways, Daisy has been kidnapped by an alien known as Tatanga. So Mario must now travel to the foreign region known as Sarasa Land, where he must conquer four different worlds. Birabuto is based on ancient Egypt, Muda based on the ocean, Easton based on Easter Island, and Chai is an Asian inspired kingdom. Each world is only made up of three levels, making a total of only 12 levels throughout the whole game. The game only takes around 20 to 30 minutes to beat, but what the game is lacking in length is made up for with solid and great gameplay. Nintendo had somehow managed to bring an almost carbon copy of Super Mario Bros. feel and control and visuals to the Nintendo Game Boy. Despite being in monochrome, Super Mario Land's graphics look strikingly similar to Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the control is almost exactly the same. Mario moves using the D-pad and uses the A button to jump. Both these actions feel identical to their NES counterpart. The jump is accurate and you can still control Mario while he's in mid-air and the B button runs and shoots Super Balls when Mario is powered up by a Super Ball flower. The Super Ball power-up is similar to the original Fireball power-up. However, while Mario's Fireballs bounce multiple times on the ground until they run into an enemy or wall, Mario's Super Balls will bounce off the ground once and go up into the air in a diagonal angle. If the ball hits the ceiling of a level or a wall, it will start to bounce everywhere. This is helpful for collecting coins at certain parts of the game, or it's just fun to watch it bounce around. There are only two other power-ups in the game, the Mushroom and the Power Star, which do exactly what they do in the original Super Mario Bros. At the end of each level is a tower of sorts with two doors. This is meant to replace the flagpole in the traditional Super Mario Bros. game. On the tower, there is one door at ground level, which you can simply walk into, or the door at the top of the tower. The top door of the tower will usually require extra platforming to get to, whether it be falling blocks or just moving floating platforms. If you're able to reach the top door of the tower, you're greeted to a little mini game. You can win one, two, or three lives or a Super Ball flower. It's really fun and is a really neat reward for being able to get all the way to the top of the doorway. Killing enemies is satisfying and simple. Simply jump on the head of an enemy for a certain one hit death or shoot Super Balls at them. Although some enemies such as flies will take two Super Balls to kill. Throughout your adventure, there's also plenty of quote-unquote new enemies for you to fight, such as Goombos and Bullet Biffs. Now, even though these are pretty much just renamed versions from their original NES counterparts, there are completely new enemies for Mario to face, such as Bombshell Koopas. When you jump on their head, they turn into a bomb that will explode a few seconds later. There's also Gao, who's a sphinx who can shoot fireballs out of his mouth, and there's plenty more new enemies that you'll see throughout the game. The bosses in this game are handled in the classic Super Mario Bros. way. You can either wait for an opening to run past them and hit a switch that will kill them, or if you want to do it the more manly way, you can fight them with your Super Ball power-up, which will take a bit more time. However, Mario only fights two of the bosses on foot, the World 1 boss, Toto Mesu, and the World 3 boss, Hiyoihoi. The other two bosses are taken on in vehicles. On both of these levels, the screen will automatically scroll leaving it up to you to kill or dodge enemies that are swimming and flying their way towards you. The World 2 boss, Dragon Zamasu, is fought in a submarine, and you can use the A or B button to shoot and the D-pad will move you around. Now, the World 4 boss, Tatanga, is fought in a plane, which controls exactly like the submarine. However, while Dragon Zamasu can be killed via slipping past him and hitting a switch, Tatanga must be fought and has two parts to his battle. The first part is a cloud monster named Biokintan who shoots birds at you and after you defeat Biokintan, that's when Tatanga shows up. 
he shoots out big orbs that split into three smaller orbs. All you have to do is hold down the fire button and dodge for your life. The first time you fight him, you're probably going to die pretty quick, but after you learn his pattern, it's pretty easy. Once Tatanga is defeated, Mario finally finds the real Daisy, after the three previous Daisies were really just enemies in disguise as Daisy. And then Daisy and Mario kiss. Well, after their little affair, they enter a plane and fly away and the credits roll. You know, looking back at Super Mario Land and playing it through again made me realize why I love the Mario franchise and Nintendo as a whole. Almost all of these games have aged extremely well gameplay wise, and that's quite the accomplishment considering this game is 30 years old. Anyways, this has been Astral Antonio with an overlook of Super Mario Land. I will have another video up soon, probably in about a week. Let me know in the comments if there's any way I can improve. Let me know in the comments if there's any way I can improve or anything I can change to make future videos better. If anybody's watching this, thank you for watching, and I plan to make many more videos in the future coming up, so please stay tuned. Thanks.